Good morning, folks. I think this is Chip Break 21. Um, so what's going on? Uh, big update on Fusion 360 and the whole cloud stuff. I'm gonna talk about that at the end um, because it's a little bit longer conversation. Um, I wanted to share, Tormach did a really cool video on us. Uh, it actually came out a couple weeks ago. I'll put a card here or a link in the description, but um, they've been doing these customer highlight stories and we appreciate it. They came out, I somewhat ironically was in the old shop, so it's a little bit dated already, but um, it was cool. I really appreciated them. And there's some other really good of these stories, I think already and, and coming out as well. So uh, thank you to Tormach and feel free to check that out. Um, I also kind of segues into a really good video from Micro. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, um, you guys, need to watch that right now especially if you're younger or you're thinking about getting to machining uh, for some reason whenever a topic comes up in modern society and micro talks about it it's like it just perfect he has that balance of intelligence and intellect and common sense that's matched with just being a good dude and, and thinking about things the right way and one of the things he talks about here is don't follow your passion um it's of course a little bit of a baited headline. The point is don't follow your passion because you think it's your passion because what if you're not any good at it? Or you know, what if you don't like it once you actually let it become, you know, there's a difference between something being something you think is going to be your passion and something that you have done and done over and over and over again. You know, for me, you guys might think this is crazy. I don't always get as excited as I used to about every little job that comes in because that romance and challenge of can I do this and am I gonna be able to succeed is really overridden by what's the next one, we gotta make money, let's get it on, let's move on with it. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm burned out, but it, it changes. But um, Micro, I know you're not watching this, but thank you, you do a really good job with these and I appreciate that and uh, he's a good dude, watch that video. Um, it also ties in to a bigger picture of how to get started in this, which is also, um, I wasn't gonna bet the farm when I started and frankly still I'm not to this day. We're, we wanna do a video on um, why we bought Tormach equipment and why we continue to use it. And yes, uh, I am looking to upgrade for a few reasons, but um, I like every, everything here is paid for. There's no equipment that I have to make payments on. It's really fun, guess what? If I do wanna for some reason stop working or you know taking on as many jobs and hustling, I could, I don't, it's not sort of like who I am, but um, I um, basically started small and have grown small. And the only thing really that is different is the shop that we're in, which I'll talk more about as well. I kind of made the decision to share uh, more about that. Uh, the short answer is it was a great deal, like a great deal, n a no brainer. So we'll, we'll save that for another chip break. Um, Micro, oh, so we tested, um, switching gears here, Sandvik dropped off this tool, and I really like the Sandvik guys, and I don't think, you know, I'm getting salesmen into the liking them, because some of the other sales guys I didn't like so much. This is supposed to be their, like, Rockstar Amazing, life-changing, Coro Mill 390, um, the same tool and the same inserts like, apparently can be used on aluminum, steel, and stainless, which to me, doesn't pass the smell test, but the fact that it's Sandvik tells me I'm probably wrong. Um, I told them right off the bat, you know, look, our Tormach machines don't always handle insert tooling that well. And they said, okay, well, I'll give it a try. And I, again, thought I'd love to, I'd love to be wrong. So I took one cut last night. The recipe was, well, let me see if I can actually open that up. Um, recent. The recipe was, um, 0.1 inch depth of cut, 0.15 width of cut at 3,000 RPMs, 24 inches a minute. So that's about a um, four thou per tooth chip load. And um, it, it stunk, like really stunk. It sounded horrible. Service finish is no good. And I don't have the recipe off the top of my head, but I know with a five flute quarter inch Lakeshore car <clears throat> carbide, I can get better finish and a higher material removal rate and it's a safer cut. So. I emailed the Sandvik guys. We'll see. I, I, I'm hoping I'm wrong on this um, because it would still be cool, I think. But it's also a really expensive tool. So if it's not a clear winner, you know, moving on. Um, what else I want to mention here? The micro 
and Sandvik and Tormach video. Okay, so let's talk about um, let's talk about Fusion 360. There's a guy named Kevin Schneider who heads up the whole project. He responded to our forum post, link in the video description, with a very good response. So I want to start off by saying thank you to their whole team. Um, you know, they they responded. They responded with a real answer from the top. Um, there's a lot of the like, conversation on the forum went off off topic, which is not you know not surprising for forum stuff. Um, there's a bunch of things you can nitpick here. Um, there's a bunch of legitimate things that are frustrating folks. You know, glitches, errors. It needs to be better. Drawings, etc. Um, I'm sympathetic to those in the sense that I want it to improve as well. I'm not sympathetic to those though at the end of the day because they are improving and what's your better option? If your option is, okay, I'm going to spend $14,000 to purchase Inventor or SolidWorks and uh, you know HSM Works or a 3D, true 3D cam, then okay, go, go do that. But if you wanna purchase or use software that's free for hobbyists and otherwise like 30 bucks a month, um, there, there, there isn't one. I think, again, the closest is on shape, but I'm not, when I played with it, I wasn't impressed. There's cam is not built in as a plugin, which for us wouldn't be as good because you've got these different options. So, um, that, like it or not, it's kind of like, can we make Fusion 360 work? You know, can we work? It works for us. We've been using exclusively since early December, so seven months. There isn't a single thing. I've had to go back into SolidWorks for CAD or CAM to do. Now, we do pretty basic CAD, I'll give you that. Uh, we also, there's little things like text along a curve that you still can't do. Not a reason for me to drop the software or get all upset, it'll probably get fixed. What is, to me, a fundamental concern is access to your data and what's reasonable access to it and what's responsible for me and, and for you guys. And so Kevin and I had a call yesterday. And I, again, I really wanna thank him. So just to give you guys a context or framework, Kevin heads up a Fusion 360 team, which is somewhere between 400 and 700 people. The reason that number varies is, uh, I'll give you an example. So Kevin explained things like FEA, which I picked on in my little video rant on Monday. Uh, FEA is not really part of the Fusion 360 team. It's a separate group within Autodesk. They have, and I'm summarizing here, and don't quote me on this specifics of this structure, but basically, to its own team, they've decided they want to push FEA through Fusion 360 versus through another Autodesk product. Just happens to be the choice. So they work through Fusion 360, but they're not sort of, they don't, I, I, I get the sense that, you know, they don't directly underneath the Fusion umbrella. The Fusion team doesn't tell them what to do. They're just doing this FEA program. It happens to be in Fusion. Um, Kevin spent 45 minutes on the phone with me and we talked about a lot of stuff. And again, I really want to thank him for taking the time. Um, I, 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 he offered to do a follow-up. He offered to get together in person um, to put this issue to bed, which is awesome. So uh, here is, the short answer is they, they are, they, are, they do not want to, they don't want to keep you from owning your data. Excuse me. They don't want to keep you from possessing your data or, or anything like that. Um, and I want to clarify my comment on Monday, which is you own your data. When you create something in Fusion 360, you own it. Nobody else owns it or claims ownership to it. Autodesk doesn't even have access to it. Now, for those of you out there who still don't think that's acceptable, you don't believe that, you think that there's a risk of hackers, et cetera, I, I, I don't have a good answer for you, sorry. I mean, my view is lots of things can get hacked, lots of things can get stolen. Um, I, I, can't, I can't satisfy you. Um, what to me is legitimate is right now, if my internet goes down, uh, Autodesk's cloud goes down, the people that like Amazon Web Services that host the cloud goes down, there's all these, those are just three layers of the chain, I'm sure there's more. I don't have my data anymore. That's what I meant by owning it to me isn't in the legal sense of the word, it's the fact that I can't practically possess it or get to it. So I said to Kevin, Kevin, please, can't we have a, a live local copy or can't you at least get us bulk download? Because again, it seems pretty, pretty responsible for me as a business owner that I should want and be able to say, hey, you know what, once a, once a week, once a month on certain things, whatever, everything, I want to just download it. I want to download it as F3Ds and I want to download it as like step files. And so uh, he, he's going to get back to me on that. He thinks it's possible, although it's going to be a little bit of a workaround because 
their view is is a little bit more trust in the cloud. They understand though, um, and the truth is the cloud hasn't been, it's been pretty, I mean, we have two people basically full-time using Fusion 360, and the, I've had very few problems. When you have a problem, it's frustrating, and it's, it feels like it's out of your control. Um, there are pr projects coming down the pipeline that include offline files and syncs. Uh, I said, why can't we do something more like that right now? And Kevin started to explain some stuff that sort of got over my head. It makes sense, but it has to do with um, models where hundreds of people are accessing the same file, and there's versions and files linked in, and it's, it's sort of like assemblies, and how their view is not to always use the version that's linked to, but rather the saved version. Ba basically, for a guy like me, where most of my Fusion projects are standalone files that don't have LinkedIn components. This isn't a problem to sort of export. The problem is, again, let's say I'll pick out an example that there's a um, a fixture plate that's shared across 300 projects in uh, across the nation for my company. Well, different people may have different versions and saved versions of that fixture plate, and so when I go to export it, what one am I trying to get to? I don't think I'm doing a great job explaining this. It made sense. I, I sympathize with the complication. I still said, but I still want to wait. That's not an excuse to me right now why I can't you know, do some sort of a bulk download. So that's what we're working on. Um, I'm happy. Um, I'm happy because it sounds like we're getting an answer. I'm happy because the answer is clearly not, sorry guys, go pound sand. If you guys want to download your data, you need to use different software. That wasn't the answer. So awesome. So they're going to figure this out and they, clear, they confirm for me verbatim, you don't, they don't own your data, they can't access your data, they don't mine your data, period. Um, and we're working on what's, what's reasonable access and ownership to, again, possess your data on like a local computer. So that's awesome. Um, what follow-up questions do you guys have? Um, I know there's things that are glitchy and broken and I for sure want to make them aware of those. I also wanna focus on the bigger picture because my question is, do I need to go back to SolidWorks and other things? And for you guys that mentioned, um, we, we should as a business, I disagree. Um, my The most interesting thing I do is this YouTube channel, Se seriously. The fact that it's our little chance to change the world and uh, the number of people that are able to use and access and download Fusion 360 is 100 or 1,000 times more than those that could possess or use SolidWorks or Inventor at least um, you know, legal copies. In other words, if you're a school or a student, you get it for free, or you can maybe download an illegal copy, which I don't think you should. Um, so Fusion 360 to me is where I want to focus, and it works for us. Like it's not broken. Um, it works great for us for what we do, with the exception that I want some reasonable way to say, hey, I I've downloaded my data. If I could bulk download all my stuff right now, uh, this issue would be good for me, knowing that it's on their roadmap to also figure out a long-term sort of ongoing solution. So I'll leave it at that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, I gotta get to work. See you uh, tomorrow or so. Oh, this Friday I fly out for the Summer Bash. So for those of you that are coming, looking forward uh, to meeting you out at Stan Z's on Saturday. Take care.